The name's Doctor. The Doctor. The security of this entire planet is at stake. Can we rely upon you? I'm not where I wanted to be, but I can work with this. You're the Doctor. <gasps> I am. How <laughs> the heck did that happen? I don't suppose you've seen anything weird around here. Well, how did that happen? Do you believe this is him? It's been a bit of a journey. What's the plan? You trust me, don't you? I still get excited when I see all the, the pictures of myself. That one particular, that one's more airbrushed than that one. <laughs> I think the first conversation started in early 2017. So I had a lot of secret keeping and a lot of internal, I really want this. How long have we got to stand here for? I'm getting cramped. And sneakily learning lines. I'm trying to. Except no one could test me on the lines because no one could know. Look at you three. And I was in a three-way trailer on another job. I tried to concentrate here. Supposedly concentrating on that job, trying to learn my audition sides. Wish me luck. And the lines you're learning aren't just regular lines. Oh, they're... no, they're not. No, thanks for that, Chris Chibnall. Super hard to decipher. 139 layers, seven of which don't make sense. When I come out of this, you know, in years to come and hand on these shoes, the thing that will be such a pleasure is to go onto a job and be like, I've learnt my lines. <laughs> you know, rather than, I'm so sorry. What is that word? Multi-intercept and surveillance device. All a bit knackered, though. What have been the highlights for you? The main highlight for me, as cheesy as it sounds, is... You're like the best person I've ever met. Mandate Brad and Tosin. You're pretty awesome. I could cry because I love them so much. You're all right, I suppose. I've been genuinely quite jammy on jobs anyway for things like that. I've always seemed to fall into these roles that have brilliant ensembles. And I didn't fully appreciate how much of an ensemble Doctor Who is. And, you know, even my ego could cope with it. Because I was like, actually, all the lines are shared. So that's why I, I was like, God, there's loads of us in it this season. I thought it was going to be about me. <laughs> so what do we do? Why are you asking her? Because she's in charge, bro. Says who? Says, Says us. Actually, it's just so incredible to go on this journey, have Brad you know, be I the know. biggest kid on set. We're here to um, pitch an invention. It's a telephone that plays music. We call him Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've totally aged him and boxed him. What's your name, sir? Steve. Jobs. Steve Jobs. And Mandy Pintosin are the most wonderful actors to be around, but just genuinely ace people. Am I being weird? A little bit, yeah. I'm trying to do small talk. I thought I was doing quite well. It's work. I'd also like to ask about how you ended up telling your friends and family when you eventually could tell them that you got it. So mum was on the inner circle okay. and did some perfect BAFTA winning lies to my dad. It was going, well, is she then? Is she? It's in paper. Well, Dad, I mean, you've read millions of things about me that aren't true in the paper, so I don't know why you think this, this is true, <laughs> although it is. But then I didn't tell my dad till the announcement because my dad would have the ability to tell the world before it was announced. But my brother and his wife and my niece has got the, the pre-warning of about two hours notice. But trying to get in touch with my dad. <laughs> I hear my dad there. Yeah, Adrian, it's your lass. Well, we're watching news. <laughs> and then he went, I've got to go. Someone wants to talk to all my friends once on really when he was like, he was off the phone straight away. I'm a good secret keeper, you see. Well, well done. You can get pretty and close. And also, my season two, season 12, I've got loads in here. Now, I'm told this is your expertise dealing with the impossible. You're right. That is impossible. Her DNA's been rewritten. Every strand corrupted and reshaped. She's no longer human. Just a shell with a human appearance. Is she gonna live, Doc? There's nothing of her to live. It's like she's been erased. For those of us who've been living under a rock, what would you say were your biggest career highlights up until this point? The most incredible thing to have ever happened to a young drama student very young. I was 23 and I was at Guildhall School of Music and Drama and I was in my third year and a casting director came to see one of our showcases and she said, will you come in tomorrow and audition for a play? And I was like, yeah. So I pretended I got a headache so I couldn't go to college. And I went to my audition and I got a role which meant leaving drama school early to be at the Globe in Mark Rylance's last season as artistic director. And not just that, in a play with him. Oh, keep time! <laughs> and not just that, a play that was also like a kind of improvised comedy in lots of ways. My best friends that came out of that job, an actress called Emma Lounge, our entrance was crawling through the audience at the Globe and climbing onto the stage. And at the end, 
you do a massive jig. I mean, I don't know if you do that at the Globe anymore, but at the end of your thing, you do a jig. And it was like, how is this a proper job? It's amazing. I left college like six weeks early and did that. But while I was there, I've got, I need some wood because I'm so jammy. I was really jammy and a film called Venus was doing the rounds for auditioning. Is it doctors? Good. What? After scouring the earth on your behalf, Jesse, I'm here to announce I've got you a job. Liar. It's true. It was such unbelievable moments of fate and timing and things that you can't control. Modelling. You've done that? Yeah. It's easy to sit here when things are going well and be like, you know, like I work really hard and blah, blah, blah. It's like everyone I know works really hard. Sure. But there's a lot of luck involved in this and there's a lot of jammy timing. And accidentally, my timing was absolutely perfect. <laughs> and so I got Venus. I had the confidence to walk into those auditions because I was already a working actor. Oh. It's not necessarily a film what people have mm -hmm. seen, but it was certainly a huge leap into the film industry. Everything all right? And then of course you go on to do... Attack the Block. <sighs> like, I could fangirl about that film myself, apart from the bits I'm in, because I'm not that bad. But <laughs> I was really good. No, Fed's got savage. I was like the grown up on set, and I was 26. Like, can you imagine feeling like a grown up at 26? Sorry about the driving, I'm getting this since Christmas. And like trying to be with the cool kids, and they just feel like that one for me. I was like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Do you think them things are dogs? Go out there and try feeding them some pedigree chum. They're aliens, love. But it was amazing, and for them, you know, the start of these extraordinary journeys. I mean, look at John Boyega now. I know, and it, but I have to say, I could see that you coming a mile. Oh, absolutely. No feds. You'd be better off calling the Ghostbusters, love. This is the block. We take care of things our own way. Get me. What a, like, a beautiful human being on set, and yeah. a really genuinely, naturally gifted actor. You don't have to do this, Moses. Yeah, I do. We were given this opportunity to be, you know, using text written by Joe Cornish, directed by Joe Cornish, in my ultimate genre. I mean, it's yeah. dreams are made Doesn't of, get guys. better. Wake up. What? Oh, if I can't communicate with people I love, what does that mean? Peace and quiet? Do I exist? Oh, my God. Are you making a video? No. The other highlight, which is one that maybe people haven't seen, is adult life skills. Do you want to see the fastest gunsling in the West? Yeah. See it. You didn't do it. Yeah, I know, it's a joke. <laughs> it's not funny. And that was such a massive passion project for me because it was one of my best mates written and directed it, me and Rach. We got to make this film in the areas we were brought up in and I got to get an extra credit, which was exec producer, which made me feel really important. I'll let everyone know on set that I was the exec. And this indie film that was a real passion project ended up having this huge life of, we got to go to the Tribeca Film Festival, Rich Tunad won the Nora Ephron Prize for screenwriting. Like, all these magical things happening with what is a brilliant British indie. Mm. And, and because that is really my journey through acting, being in loads of indie films, that was one of the highlights as well. Obviously Broadchurch, tiny TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sounds about that. <laughs> yeah. Little thing. Then, then Broadchurch. <sighs> but obviously for me, not knowing what Broadchurch was going to lead to, which sure. is... Sure. You don't know, do you? No, and you come out of it with all these mates for life, which has been incredible, some of which are Whovians. Also building a friendship up with Chris Chibnall, who's the showrunner. And now you're on US talk shows. I really enjoyed seeing a clip of you with Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Were they right Doctor Who? This is not a joke. DR dot who. <laughs> That's great. Where are you from in England? I am from Huddersfield okay. in West Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Um, yeah, it's, it's really well hidden in my voice, you can't tell at all. I said Huddersfield, where I'm from, Huddersfield, and apparently in the text underneath to translate, they put Hoodlesfield or something. And like, obviously, like, the people that saw it from Huddersfield were like, where? <laughs> but, but that's not down to them, that's down to my horrific pronunciation of the town I was brought up in. My favorite is, do you think you could tone it down? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Hood. Hood, you know, Huddes, Huddersfield. The town is Huddersfield. Oh, yes. Um, and the village is called Skelmanthorpe. Skelmanthorpe. 
Yes. <laughs> I loved seeing you on the <clears throat> Graham Norton red sofa with Ryan Gosling. That would be enough. <laughs> Lady Gaga, oh, no. Bradley Cooper, and a theremin. And Graham. <laughs> and Graham. And Graham. Yeah, and a theremin. And Graham. <laughs> It was a true delight seeing you tell a story and have Ryan Gosling looking at you like this going... The name for me would be affectionately referred to as, oh, are you a shat lass? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm from shat. <laughs> and there's shat taxi, <laughs> shat pizza, there's shat everything. I love the videos of you going to schools and seeing kids' faces just light up. I, I have to say, I am always more excited. <laughs> and I'm, like, really screaming and hyper. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've always done the first in the loudest. Oh, oh my God, God, it's you! It's you! I've loved all that, and I've loved the fact that, like, when I, when I first got it, I was like, I was recognised in a cafe, and this girl said to me, I could see a clock, and I was like, oh, it's the first movie. And, and um, I had, I'd just been announced, I hadn't even done it, and she was like, oh, I really wanted Ben Wishaw. And I was like, do you know what? You might get him. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh. Uh -huh. I was like, but do you know what? You might get him. Yeah. That is ace. And the, mm -hmm. and the thing is, there's someone for everyone out there and everybody's doctor is out there. And yeah. that I'm never not going to be somebody's doctor as well. Sure. So when you've got a huge ego, you know that even, you know, when I'm like 70 odd, someone will be like, that's my doctor. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There is an element of being on the lunch boxes and all the toys and whatever with this. But you also get to be in a Madame Two Swords, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. for you the moment where you went, oh, I might be a bit famous? Am yeah. I famous now? Yeah, stuff like that's bizarre because it becomes a part of your random filming schedule. And they're like, oh, just so you know, you know you're not shooting the first two hours of the day. It's because you're going to go get measured for your wax work. You know that? What? And you're going to get your Blue Peter badge. What? <laughs> OK, right, OK. This is the process. I've got to take it all in. That is some artistry. It is. Well, for me, standing still was an absolute miracle. But as I had to stand there, they measure everything. You learn things about your face you never knew. <laughs> I've got a really wonky mouth. And I'd always right. thought, like, why do people, like, draw lipstick halfway up my face? Because it's like, oh, they try to even out my mouth. Well, I didn't know till that it was really wonky, but they showed me the measurements. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, it is. And you've got to do your poster poses as well. And I am a poster poses. What's the doctor pose? My doctor pose very often gets edited somewhere before because it's more like that. I kind of, and they're like, do you know what? Let's go for maybe a bit more heroic. I'm like... <laughs> so we go through... The photo shoots are... I mean, for me, it's not the highlight of my day, that. I love it when I get one and I think, oh, yeah, that's good, that. People will relate to that one. <laughs> but I would love to see, like, a photo where it's like... <laughs> yeah, 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 all that. <laughs> Hopefully. Save the well, world? Yeah, yeah, maybe. You also get to do one of my favourite things on the internet, which is when you get to go to, like, photo shoots, going... Oh, you bob up behind them when they're talking about you. That. Nah. Welcome to... Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> I'm not shy. <laughs> it, may, it may come across. Not all actors are, you know, kind no. of... This bit sits comfortably with them. I've landed on my feet here because I love a chat. Sure. And I love those kind of interactions. <laughs> you didn't wear a Doctor Who t-shirt. We need to talk about that. I mean, we've all seen my reaction to Will Champion and Johnny Vulcan from Coldplay. So I, I understand it. I get it. Sounds lovely. And it was all yellow. Really oh my God, I'm going to cut my eyes out. <laughs> oh my God. Hello. I'm 36 and I sound. I feel like I'm 13. And so people's reactions are brilliant. But there's also the ones that go like that, who can really get in the go, hiya. And you're like, and the energy just is like, okay. <laughs> ah, like I do the scream and I'm like, I'm here. And they're like, oh, great. He said this was going to happen. Like one of them did. I said to my husband, this was going to happen, you know, before we came in. And I was like, right, great. So those are the funniest because you're like, you're really trying to like. You're too clever, aren't you? Well, yeah, you've got to try and like get the energy going for all of us. Come on. But I love it. But we had another event in San Diego for her universe where people create their own costumes over the year and they get to showcase and model them. And I was going to be a guest to talk about a costume. Mm -hmm. So I said to the incredible presenter who was lovely, I said, please, can you pretend that I'm an extra model? and that I'm going to just come on. So DJ Amanda Jones, um, can you play uh, the, the Doctor Who music? I was like, this will be it. So I get to end, and I'll also be able to do a camera. <laughs> and so we're trying to practice. And then I'll be able to get to the end, and then I'll lift my hood up. 
But there was a very spine tingling moment where it was only about three steps in that you could tell that there were just maybe loads of Uvians there. Because I had my head down and everything, and I get on the tube all the time and no one looks at me. So I, I, know, the, I know the do not have any presence walk. Mm -hmm. So that was brilliant because it was so Comic Con in its sense of it was one to one with the fans, but mm -hmm. in a way that we were at an event celebrating them and it wasn't about us. So stuff like that is it. Is. This show also allows you to go to anywhere, anywhen, right? Yes. Are there any classic kind of movie and TV cliches that you'd still love to do? I want to slide down the waterfall into the pirate ship water with Goonies. I basically just want yeah. that slide. Or I'd do sloths like swing. <laughs> Actually, I'd start at the beginning because I've seen it so many times, I'd know how to get through all the booby traps. I'd be fine. It'd be a really quick escape room style because I'd be like, nailed it. You've only just got started, obviously, but are there any mementos that you've managed to sneak home? Yes. The last season, in the Norwegian episode... Oh, nice fjord. That is a fjord, isn't it? You don't often see the detail in the houses. And there were some really odd interiors. And there was this quite creepy wooden fisherman statue. And I took that. <laughs> And only I know it's from Doctor Who. <laughs> I love those ones. I don't even know if it featured. Sonic screwdriver? Nah, I'm good. This random oh, fish man. I get lo I've got loads of these. Some toy. I've got one of them. <laughs> Hello, you. I've missed you. When you do the Doctor, when you're playing her... <laughs> You've done yourself up. Do you learn little tidbits, like random bits of detail about the character and all the lore? Very nice. Is Chris telling you stuff? Yeah, it's a bit of everything. We have set visits with people who come to the TARDIS and we show them round. And I think they're very often surprised at the detail. Start believing. So say I'm doing something like we're about to travel or I'm trying to locate some moment in history or in the future and I'm using a dial. I know where to go, but from the way it's cut, uh -huh. there's not necessarily that kind of Edgar Wright click Duh, duh. You, you know, we don't get to go, right, this is the turning key, this is this, this <laughs> is this, this is the button. But I know it. Amazing. And there is then sometimes where it's like, oh, we're going to shoot this side. It's like, can't shoot that side, I'm afraid, because this is where I need to press this button. You're doing this deliberately, aren't you? Who are you talking to? If it's me, I haven't touched anything. I'm talking to the TARDIS. It has to be like that for me. I have to know that that does that, that does that, and that there is a very set routine for that, whether it, it makes it <laughs> out there into the ether or not. But then there are things that... I know uh, Hoovian, mm. but then there are things someone will say, mm. you don't pronounce it like that. I'm like, oh no, it's my accent. They're like, no, it's an actual word. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's my accent. It's made up, it's not made up, it's not made up. And I'm like, right, okay, cool, cool, cool. Do you have a particular techno babble line that you'll never forget? Because the classic one is, I reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. I reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. I have an ability to disregard and chuck in here, out there. If someone says it, I can get to the end. A blocked inside pumping out methane and sulfides and trichloroethylene. Never mind the specialist material that hasn't been properly preserved. But those lines are so <laughs> terrifying that when I get through them, I'm like that. <laughs> Spiders gravitate to their food through vibration. Any ideas? Easy. There was one in the Spiders episode. <laughs> it was about arachnids in a kind of very scientific detail. Mm -hmm. And I was so chuffed for myself and then it got cut. <laughs> I was like, I was only three hours of my life oh. for that one sentence. It's fine, don't worry about it. I'd like to ask you a very expansive question, if you don't mind. What does playing the Doctor mean to you? I find it a much more emotional process and journey. I mean all of it, the filming, the Whovian community, the new fandom, what it means to people, the whole thing much more emotional than I thought. Love, in all its forms, is the most powerful weapon we have. Because love is a form of hope, and like hope, love abides in the face of everything. Because I'm a new Hoovian as well, I think the thing that I find so beautiful about it is the fact that there's just endless possibility. And I mean it for a fan who's seven or for the fans who are in their 
70s and 80s who've watched this and the something somewhere always includes and represents them. We're all the same. We want certainty, security, to believe that people are evil or heroic, but that's not how people are. You want to know the secrets of existence? Start with the mysteries of the heart. The fact that this show means that any point in our future history, different universe, there is a door for us all to see something new. That is incredible. None of us know for sure what's out there. That's why we keep looking. Keep your faith. Travel, hopefully. The universe will surprise you. Constantly. I don't want to get too spiritual about this character, but it really is he, she, everything about her is truly empowering and encouraging. And I think it's such a positive force for the world. But there are a couple of phrases that really speak to me whenever I see them, I get those goosebumps. And they're, don't be cruel, don't be cowardly. Yeah. Are they a key part of what you're thinking of when you're encapsulating the character? Yeah, one of the big things for me with the Doctor that I play is, is hope. And I think that in the very turbulent climate we live in, this sense of um, hope and love without borders and inclusivity and and everyone is a part of this journey and and that everyone can be a hero like the the show has this fan base because of love in in, in all sense of the word and on that note and on that note can i just say thank you no, no for being great right. not only at this but also at this oh thanks you're brilliant that's Ta it that's all i've got you get uh, uh, no that's fab thanks <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.